What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to recover data from a dead laptop. Let's get right into this. Okay, so to recover data from a dead laptop, it is pretty simple. You only need a few things. But the first thing that I want to mention is I would recommend using a laptop that has Windows 10 to do this because whenever I tried to connect the hard drive to a laptop that had Windows 8 and also one that had 8.1, it wasn't even registering that I had it connected. Once I did it with my Windows 10, it worked right away and it was really simple to do. So if you're going to try the method that I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video, which is really easy to do, I'd recommend using a laptop that has Windows 10. So not only are you gonna need a laptop that has Windows 10, but you're also going to need the hard drive out of the dead laptop. So it's really easy to take out the hard drive out of a laptop. So in this video, I'm not gonna show you how to do it because not only are every laptop different, but it's so easy to do. I did it in a previous video on a previous how-to video. So I'll try to remember to leave that link down below, but you're gonna need the hard drive out of the dead laptop. And the last thing that you need is an adapter to connect the hard drive to the working laptop via USB. Now this one I got off of Amazon for $20. I did see some that were cheaper, but the best part about this one is there is two lights to tell you if your hard drive is working. There is a red solid light, which should stay solid as long as it's connected. And there is a blue light that should be blinking if it's working. So I definitely recommend getting one that has the indicator lights. It just makes it easier. If the hard drive you're trying to use is faulty and it's not working properly, as soon as you connect it, it will tell you right away, which is really awesome. Plus, I did see other ones online that not only have this piece, but there is also a power cord that connects the hard drive to a standard outlet. In my opinion, I would avoid those because they're just extra stuff that you just don't need. So once you have the laptop turned on, all you're going to want to do is just stay on the desktop, and then you're going to take your hard drive, and your adapter and you're going to connect it and plug it into the laptop so i'll just turn it around and i'll show you guys what i mean okay so you have your hard drive and you have your adapter so you're going to plug the hard drive into the adapter make sure it lines up and then you're going to connect this to the computer via the usb Now, if it is working properly, as you can see, the red light is solid, the blue light is blinking, and you can actually hear the fan running. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it over, and as you can see, I am on the desktop. It's way easier for me just to record the screen of the laptop rather than just filming it with my phone. The reason for that is because it's easier for you guys to see exactly what I am clicking along the way. So I'm just gonna connect the hard drive back to the laptop because it should come up and pop up on my screen almost instantly. I can hear it running, the lights are on. So in a couple seconds, it should come up on the screen as it just did. So if for you, it doesn't pop up right away and doesn't pop up on its own, there's nothing to worry about yet. You're going to want to, if you're still on the desktop screen, nothing has happened, just open up your files and make sure there is the E drive either here or on the side. Sometimes you manually have to go in to open it up. Sometimes it doesn't automatically pop up like it just did on screen for me. So I'm gonna go back into it here. So this is where you should be now once you open up the E drive and the hard drive should be coming up as the E drive. I don't know if I just mentioned that a minute ago or not. So you're gonna to want to go and click users that's where all of your personal data, anything that you saved on your laptop is going to be stored. Everything else that is on the E drive is basically how it is formatted to whatever laptop you had. So now you're gonna to want to go and it should be the first one here. Whatever your dead laptop was named, it should come up right here and that's what you're gonna to want to click. Now before I click it, I have already given myself permission to be able to view and basically take off anything that is on this hard drive. So whenever you click the name, the first one here, whatever your laptop is named, it might prompt you saying you do not have permission to view this stuff. 
nothing to worry about. You're just going to want to back out of that prompt. And what you're going to do is right click on the whatever one you're clicking, whatever is the name of the folder that you're going to be clicking. You're going to right click. You're going to go down to properties. You're going to go under security. And you're going to click down here where it says advanced. Now in here, as you can see, it says owner and it will say system. So what system means is it is programmed to only be used with the system, AKA the laptop that it was pulled out of. You're going to want to go and change that. So right here where it's blue, you're going to want to hit change. And this is what should come up for you. So here you're going to go and you're going to put whatever the laptop, the working laptop that you're using, you're going to want to put its name in. So my laptop, I just named it takedown. Now, before you hit OK, just go over and hit check names. If you typed it in correctly, whatever your laptop name is, it should come up kind of like this and change the name. You're going to want to hit OK. And as you can see up here, it is changed. So you're going to go down to here and you're going to say OK. You're going to back out and then you're going to click into it. Now, if whenever you go to click into it, as you can see for me, since I already changed the permissions before, it already remembered that I already had those settings in effect. But for you, it might come up with the same prompt. You're just going to click whatever it says on that prompt. And it's just going to basically check to make sure you have those permissions. Basically, anything that you changed, whenever you change the name, like you just seen me do on screen and click OK, it's basically just going to apply those changes. So once it's done loading, it should open up right away. If it doesn't, just go back into the screen like I did. So I'll actually do it on screen for you guys here. Right click, properties, back under security, back under advanced and see what it says near owner. If it says system like it did prior to it, prior to you making changes, go and try it again and hit okay and maybe it will work. If not, once you make the changes, you can come down here and hit apply. For me, it's worked every time for just hitting okay. So once you have access to the hard drive, you can go in and start transferring anything that you want to recover over onto your laptop. Or if you have a flash drive, plug it into that working laptop and you can just basically drag and click and put everything into the flash drive. So then you can go and transfer it onto a new laptop if you had to purchase one or whatever you want to do with your information. So for me, the most important stuff that I always save on my laptop is either under documents, downloads, music, pictures or videos. Now, prior to me making this video, I already factory reset this laptop. So everything was wiped off. However, I wanted to show you guys that if you get this far into it and you start clicking things, anything that was saved on your laptop should be shown here. So I just went on Google and I went and just saved a couple pictures onto this hard drive just to show you guys that it should pop up. So for example, if you have pictures saved on your hard drive, that was on the dead laptop. If you click pictures, anything that was saved under pictures should appear. So these are the three pictures I just went and basically saved them just for the purpose of showing you guys that anything you have saved, you just click into those folders and it should pop up. So that is about it. Like I said, all you're going to want to do is click and drag. Let's say you want to save these. You're going to go and you're going to save them wherever you want, whether it's a flash drive or just save them on the working laptop and then deal with them later. You can go and do that. So that is honestly it. That is how to recover your saved files from a dead laptop. It's really easy to do. You just have to remember, pull out the dead laptop, get an adapter, use a Windows 10 laptop. And then just go through the steps like I showed you on screen. If you run into problems like I showed you guys, since I already went and I already changed the permission settings for me to get this to work prior to making the video, my laptop already remembered the settings that I changed. So you're just going to have to go in and you're going to have to right click and go through the steps. Since I already had it done, I tried my best to show you step by step how to do it. 
and hopefully you're able to go and recover any of your data. This hard drive originally, whenever I went to do this on my own before making this video, before I wiped it out entirely, had 3,500 files on this. So anything that would have been in your recycling bin does get stored on your hard drive, believe it or not. So it was really funny whenever I went and seen that much stuff and having to go and scroll through and to basically find everything that was worth saving on this. But once you hit factory resets, it wipes this out entirely. Anything you had saved is gone forever. So I hope this has helped you guys realize just how easy it is to recover the data off of a dead laptop on your own. All you need to do is get this adapter and make sure you use Windows 10. Now you can go and of course give it to somebody or bring it to Best Buy or something like that and get them to do it, but they're going to charge a lot of money. It's easier just to do it yourself and it honestly does not take too long. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it has helped. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.